Now, SpaceX had the contract for Artemis III. Um, they're be by the way, I love SpaceX. It's an amazing company. The problem is they're behind. They pushed their timelines out, and we're in a race against China. The president and I want to get to the moon in this uh, president's term. So I'm going to open up uh, the, the contract. I'm going to let other, uh, other uh, space companies compete with SpaceX, like, li like Blue Origin. The positions of SpaceX and Starship within NASA's Artemis program are now facing a serious challenge following a surprising new statement from NASA. Almost immediately after the announcement, Musk issued his response. So, what exactly happened and how did Musk react? In other news, SpaceX has just set a remarkable new record for rocket reuse with Falcon 9, while also achieving another major milestone with the Starlink program. Meanwhile, NASA has made headlines for another reason entirely, as the agency has reportedly laid off a significant number of employees. Let's explore all these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. We are now less than two years away from Artemis 3, the highly anticipated mission scheduled for 2027 that will return humans to the lunar surface for the first time in more than 50 years. This mission holds immense significance not only because of the symbolic return to the moon, but also because it could determine which nation will lead the new space race of the 21st century. SpaceX and its Starship HLS, or Human Landing System, have been officially assigned to carry out this historic task. However, that arrangement may now be in jeopardy following a surprising new statement from NASA itself the very agency that awarded SpaceX the contract several years ago. Recently, NASA's acting administrator Sean Duffy made headlines after announcing a major shift in the agency's approach to the Artemis program. He stated that NASA would open the development of the HLS to new competition. On X, Duffy wrote, We are in a race against China, so we need the best companies to operate at a speed that gets us to the moon first. SpaceX has the contract to build the HLS, which will get U.S. astronauts there on Artemis 3. But competition and innovation are the keys to our dominance in space. So, NASA is opening up HLS production to Blue Origin and other great American companies. In another post, Duffy added, A little competition does not hurt and it spurs innovation. American companies will now be able to compete to see which one can get us back to the moon first. We are going to be China there, and we are going to do it under the leadership of the president. From Duffy's statements, it's clear that NASA is placing tremendous emphasis on the goal of being the first to return to the moon, primarily in the context of its rivalry with China's rapidly advancing lunar program. Within that competitive framework, NASA seems to believe that SpaceX's progress on Starship has not been as fast as they had hoped. Indeed, when we examine Starship's development timeline, there are signs of concerns. After three years of test flights and 11 launches, Starship has made impressive strides in proving its fundamental systems. However, many critical milestones for the lunar variant have yet to be achieved. These include in-orbit refueling, successful orbital payload delivery, and controlled landings, key capabilities needed for the Artemis III mission. At the current rate, it is likely that SpaceX will spend the first half of next year finalizing the those objectives, with refueling infrastructure construction beginning mid-year. That tight timeline raises legitimate questions about readiness for the 2027 deadline. Additionally, Starship's sheer size and design complexity present their own set of challenges. The lunar landing sequence involves coordination with other systems and spacecraft, making each test an intricate and high-stakes process. In response to these delays, Duffy's proposed solution is unconventional but strategic. Rather than removing SpaceX from the program entirely, NASA is introducing competition to create motivation and drive innovation across the industry. Blue Origin appears to be the primary beneficiary of this policy shift, as the company continues developing its Blue Moon Mark I and II landers. Naturally, SpaceX and Musk did not stay silent following these remarks. Musk, known for his bold and unfiltered responses, quickly pushed back. He stated, They won't. SpaceX is moving like lightning compared to the rest of the space industry. Moreover, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission. Mark my words. 
When asked about competitors like Blue Origin, Musk was characteristically blunt. He remarked, Blue Origin has never delivered a payload to orbit, let alone the moon. Beyond the immediate rivalry, Musk emphasized a long-term vision that distinguishes SpaceX from traditional lunar lander programs. He stated, a permanently crewed lunar science base would be far more impressive than a repeat of what was already done incredibly well by Apollo in 1969. This reflects his broader philosophy. Success on the moon should not merely be about who arrives first, but about who stays and builds something sustainable. Musk has consistently argued that true victory for the U.S. will come from establishing a permanent presence on the lunar surface, using it as a springboard for future exploration and colonization. However, it is also true that arriving first carries significant strategic advantages. Being first would allow NASA and SpaceX to claim the most favorable locales for future bases and to set key precedents in lunar exploration and resource utilization. Starship's massive capacity offers clear advantages in that regard. Its ability to transport larger crews, heavier payloads, and essential equipment could accelerate the construction of a lunar base. Moreover, Starship could itself be converted into part of that base, minimizing cost and maximizing efficiency. While Musk's comments are confident, actions will ultimately speak louder than words. For SpaceX to prove NASA's concerns unfounded, the company will need to demonstrate rapid and consistent progress in the coming year. This means accelerating Starship's flight schedule, achieving orbital refueling tests, executing safe and repeatable landings, and preparing the HLS variant for full-scale lunar operations. The next year, therefore, will be a decisive one for SpaceX. If they can deliver on these technical goals, the company could reaffirm its leadership in human spaceflight and solidify its role as NASA's key partner in the Artemis program. But if delays continue, NASA's decision to introduce competition could reshape the balance of power in the American space industry. So what do you think about NASA's latest move? Do you agree that opening competition could push the Artemis program forward, or do you believe SpaceX could remain the sole provider for the lunar landing system? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below, and be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more updates as we follow SpaceX's remarkable journey to the moon and beyond. Meanwhile, as we await the next big leap for Starship, the rest of SpaceX is wasting no time in proving its unmatched dominance. In two recent launches, Falcon 9 has achieved not just one, but two impressive records that further reinforce SpaceX's leadership in reusability and orbital deployment. The first of these flights was a mission dedicated to deploying 28 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. It lifted off from Cape Canaveral at 1.39 p.m. Eastern and completed all phases of its mission flawlessly. However, the real highlight of this launch was its booster, B-1067. After a smooth landing on the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, the booster reached an incredible milestone of 31 successful landings. This achievement marks a new high not only for SpaceX's reusable rocket program, but also for the entire global aerospace industry. It's an extraordinary demonstration of engineering excellence and operational consistency, something no other company has been able to replicate so far. Even more impressive, B-1067's journey is far from over. The booster is already scheduled to be recovered, refurbished, and prepared for its next flight. With only nine more launches to reach its long-term goal of 40 successful missions, it stands as a symbol of the durability and reliability that define SpaceX's Falcon fleet. The second record came less than two hours later at the company's West Coast launch site in California during another Starlink mission. While this launch did not focus on booster reuse, it achieved a historic milestone in satellite deployment. With the success of this mission, SpaceX has now launched over 10,000 satellites in total since the beginning of the Starlink program. Program. It's important to note that this figure reflects the total number of satellites launched, not all of which remain active today. Some have been deorbited due to age or technical issues, leaving approximately 8,600 satellites currently operational in orbit. Nonetheless, this number represents a scale of achievement unmatched by any other organization in human history. These two missions once again demonstrate the consistency, innovation, and ambition that have become synonymous with SpaceX. 
Each successful flight not only advances their immediate goals, but also reinforces their long-term vision of creating a fully reusable and sustainable space transportation system. But while SpaceX continues its upward climb, NASA finds itself navigating one of the most turbulent periods in its modern history. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory, long regarded as the beating heart of NASA's robotic exploration, has announced up to 500 layoffs as part of a sweeping restructuring effort casting uncertainty over the agency's future direction. The layoffs come amid an ongoing U.S. government shutdown and the looming possibility of the largest budget reduction in NASA's 66-year history. While over 15,000 federal employees have already been furloughed nationwide, NASA clarified that these layoffs are not directly tied to the shutdown but are part of a reorganization that began in June. In a statement, JPL explained, in order to best position JPL going forward, Forward, we are taking steps to restructure and establish an appropriate size to ensure future success. The cuts will affect staff across technical, business, and support roles, with employees having been notified since the 14th of October. JPL manages many of NASA's flagship science missions, including the Psyche Asteroid Probe, the Europa Clipper, the Euclid Space Telescope, the Perseverance Mars Rover, and the Deep Space Network the vital communications link for interplanetary missions. In an internal message, JPL Director Dave Gallagher acknowledged the difficulty of this transition, writing, I recognize this is a tremendous amount of change in a short period of time and will be challenging for our entire community. While not easy, I believe taking these actions now will help the lab transform at the scale and pace necessary to achieve humanity's boldest ambitions in space. This marks another round of workforce reductions for JPL following previous cuts under the Trump administration that eliminated roughly 855 positions and ended remote work for many employees. According to the BBC, seven federal agencies are now proceeding with over 4,000 combined layoffs, prompting unions to file legal challenges in federal court in Northern California. A small fraction of NASA's workforce remains in accepted roles to maintain operations aboard the ISS, monitor satellites, and continue development for Artemis lunar missions. The full consequences of these layoffs remain uncertain, but many fear they could slow progress on critical projects and weaken NASA's leadership in space exploration. The coming months will determine whether the agency can adapt to this crisis and continue its mission to push the boundaries of human discovery. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.